Out of all the nutrients that our body needs, potassium is at the very top of the list as far as the huge requirements. We're talking 4,700 milligrams. No other nutrient comes even close to that. Now, the question is why? Why do we need so much potassium? Because potassium fulfills a very, very important enzyme that's involved in the sodium potassium pump. This pump is in all of your nerve cells. It's in all of your muscle cells. It is the pump that establishes the battery of our cells. We need this pump to move electrical impulses. We also need this pump for muscle contraction that are in your arteries. We need it in the heart for the heart muscle, as well as in your kidney. And today we're going to talk about the consequences of not having enough potassium in our diet. But there's some new information I want to share with you from a paper entitled Achieving the Benefits of a High Potassium Paleolithic Diet Without the Toxicity. Apparently, thousands of years ago in the Stone Age, humans have consumed a lot more than 4,700 milligrams. In fact, there's evidence to show that humans consumed up to 15,000 milligrams of potassium every single day. That's four times the current RDAs, which is still quite high, 4,700. And then if we look at the relationship of potassium to sodium with those levels, we're talking 16 times more potassium than sodium. So there's some really interesting, credible data to show that we need even more potassium than we really think. And what backs that up is the kidney. Our kidneys have a very robust capacity to get rid of excess potassium, but not sodium, but potassium. So sometimes people say that, oh yeah, potassium is bad for the kidneys. It can create problems. That's only in like stage five kidney disease, which is end stage kidney disease. If you take large amounts of potassium before you get kidney disease, it actually has been shown to be protective against kidney disease. I mean, the average person consumes like 1.5 cups of vegetables, which are the primary source of potassium. And no, you're not going to get a lot of potassium from bananas. Bananas have roughly about 300 milligrams. So you'd have to eat a lot of bananas to get your fulfillment of potassium. And of course, bananas have a lot of fructose, which comes with other issues. Potatoes are also supposed to have a lot of potassium, but of course the starch creates other issues. One medium-sized potato has about 600 milligrams of potassium, but just one cup of leafy greens is between 500 to 800 milligrams. That's one cup. And if you consumed like five, seven, or even 10 cups, well, that would give you a tremendous amount of potassium. The point is we need a lot of potassium. We probably need more than we're consuming. Unfortunately, the average person is not consuming enough potassium from the diet. And you might say, well, maybe they're getting it from their supplements, right? Well, the majority of supplements only give you like between 49 to at the very most 99 milligrams per tablet. So how many pills would you have to take per day to even get your daily requirement of potassium? Well, you'd have to have 47 pills, okay? 47 pills. No one's going to do that. And if we look at a potassium deficiency, it's often missed. It's omitted because most of the potassium is inside the cell, like 98%. So you can't accurately determine if you have a low potassium situation just by the blood because most of the potassium is inside the cell. You would have to do a different type of test called an intracellular potassium test. Not to mention the symptoms of a potassium deficiency are sometimes very vague, especially in the beginning. You might have a little bit of weakness in your diaphragm that affects your breathing a little bit. It's hard to breathe. You might feel a little fatigue. You might have heart palpitations, but these are all just early signs of a potassium deficiency. But eventually, as that deficiency becomes worse, you can develop high blood pressure. You can actually have an increased risk of stroke. You can get uh, fluid retention. You can even get loss of bone and kidney stones because potassium helps keep calcium out of the arteries and out of the urine. Because sometimes when people get their urine tested, they have high levels of calcium in their urine, which is uh, you know kind of an environment to form a kidney stone. As you can see, potassium is really, really important and it can create a lot of problems. Now, there's some interesting reasons why people are deficient that go beyond just not consuming enough greens. If you take penicillin, that can create a potassium deficiency. 
or diuretics or steroids or go through chronic stress or have higher levels of insulin with a high carb diet. Another interesting reason why people are deficient is even going on the ketogenic diet. So let's say, for example, you start the ketogenic diet, which is a low carb diet, and um, you're going into this already deficient in potassium, and you take no potassium electrolytes or supplements, right? What happens is potassium helps you store glycogen. That's the stuff in your liver and your muscles, stored sugar. So as you use that up, what comes with that is a lot of water release and a loss of potassium as well. So if you don't take potassium when you start the ketogenic diet, you may end up with a potassium deficiency from that reason. But also you have, if you're fasting for like three or four days, right? And you don't take supplements, especially electrolytes like potassium, uh, trace minerals or B vitamins, and you're doing this prolonged fast, you can start having problems from that. Not to mention, let's say you fasted for three or four or five days, and then you eat too much too quickly, and then you also ate too many carbohydrates. That's called refeeding syndrome, which is a severe potassium deficiency. Now, I'm not going to get into the details, but it can create a sudden shift of potassium from your blood right into the cell, and you can end up with a serious uh, low potassium problem, which could be dangerous. Did you realize that the average person in the U.S. consumes like 60% of their calories from ultra-processed foods, where they strip the nutrients out? I mean, let's just take Doritos, for example. I used to love Doritos. I would consume huge bags of Doritos in college. I mean, just massive amounts. And the next morning, I would end up with all sorts of fluid retention in my fingers and my feet. And at the time, I had no information about health. I was the worst. So back then, I think they put 11 ingredients in these Doritos. And now it's, I think, up to 30 ingredients, different flavors that just make it taste like you're dipping a taco with hot wings into ranch dressing. And so is there a lot of potassium in Doritos? No, there's a lot of sodium in all these fast food restaurants. So it gives you this flavoring, which is kind of addicting. So you eat too much of it. And then you end up with a potassium deficiency. So all these fast food restaurants, as you see them, as you're driving down the street, are just pumping out empty calories filled with a lot of sodium, very little nutrients, if anything, practically zero potassium. And you can see it too. If you watch people coming out of these, these uh, restaurants and look at their eyes, it's all swollen around the eyes. They don't look healthy. They're also going to lose the power of their cellular batteries. So they're gonna be walking around tired. And each one of those symptoms will then probably be addressed by a separate drug. So they're on high blood pressure medication, they're on a blood thinner, they're probably taking high energy drinks, and of course a diuretic for the edema and the high blood pressure, which causes further potassium deficiencies. I challenge you to do this experiment with your own body. Start consuming a lot of high potassium foods, okay? A lot of leafy greens, just for a week. And if you don't like greens, just you can make shakes. Blend kale with blueberries. There's a lot of different recipes. But start to increase more potassium-rich foods and just notice how many of these problems start disappearing. And if you wanted a really good demo on what this potassium requirement looks like in actual food, I did a video on that. So check that out. I put it up right here.